So you can hardly absorb iron in the duodenum without a strong acid and without vitamin C. Because vitamin C plus HCl helps you absorb iron. And vitamin C is the one that reduces ferric to ferrous. Please, hold on. Ferric is the iron that has a 3 positive up there. You see, iron is Fe, right? So we have Fe3 plus and Fe2 plus. The active substance that you can absorb in your gut is Fe2 plus, which is the ferrous. But the Fe3 plus, it cannot be absorbed. But that is what is in diets. That is what is in those supplements. So for you to liberate it, you have to reduce it from, F, from 3 plus to 2 plus. Now this is where chemistry comes in. For those of you who sat near the window, a very good point here from Health Talk. Beans, wheat, oats, spinach inhibit uh, iron absorption. I'll talk about that also. So imagine this. Vitamin C reduces ferric to ferrous. Iron 3 to iron 2 for you to absorb it in the gut. And now you're taking all these foods without vitamin C. You're running away from fermented cabbage. You're running away from green leafy vegetables. Because, of course, they give me the, the acid. They give me acids in the stomach. Hyperacidity, the way, the way you call it. And you're failing to understand nutrition is not difficult until somebody opens your eyes up. You need vitamin C plus the hydrochloric acid in the stomach for you to absorb iron. So, number two, vitamin C is a reducing agent. It has to reduce... Ferric to ferrous for you to absorb it in the duodenum. Perfect. Number three, vitamin C together with vitamin E, they are antioxidants. Now remember vitamin C is supposed to be used to treat uh, that scurvy. The ones that people have bleeding gums and all that, okay, and the, dis and the discolored teeth. Vitamin C comes in handy to treat that. And even those who have bleeding skin, because when you have lack of vitamin C, you will not form collagen, you start bleeding through the skin, and the blood vessels become very weak, they, uh, they can actually rupture. You will have very bad uh, uh, gums, uh -huh, the, 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 the gum disease. But this is the point. People who smoke cigarettes can actually benefit most from vitamin C, because vitamin C, you've seen how people who smoke cigarettes, how their lips and their gums look like, and their teeth. And why are you even smoking cigarettes in the first place? Hey, cigarettes is involved. Cigarette smoking is involved in 98% of health conditions. And if you're hoping that that company along Lungalunga Road is going to close just to save your life, it's not going to close. That company has been there from back then. It is a British company. <laughs> that company, I remember when uh, uh, Her Excellency Beth Mugo was the Minister for Health. She tried to draft something, and I've, I've seen uh, a snippet of her book. She tried to draft laws that were supposed to protect people from cigarette smoking, and that company was going to make a lot of losses. That is the time she went down the road with that ministry. It became so chaotic. Because that company cannot allow to lose a single shilling just because somebody stopped smoking cigarettes. They will do anything to make sure that you are a smoker. Because once a smoker, coming out of that demon of smoking, oh, oh, hmm, and it's implicated in most of these conditions. So actually, the cigarette companies are the best friends to the pharmaceutical companies, right? Imagine in my country, nicotine as a pure substance is illegal. But nicotine in a cigarette is legal. Hello? <laughs> if you're caught with nicotine as a pure substance, you'll be jailed. And the fines are very, very huge. But nicotine in a cigarette <laughs> is okay, right? So it's not the same nicotine. <laughs> in your cigar. This one is from a cigarette. So go and smoke it. And nicotine induces its own metabolism. What does that mean? When you smoke a cigarette... That goes into the system, it's go, it goes into the liver, it's broken down so fast, and then the same same nicotine activates the further breakdown of that nicotine. And immediately you finish that smoke, by the time you're getting into 15 minutes, already you don't have nicotine in the system, the body's asking for more. That's how you end up smoking a whole pack without even knowing. 
So if you are a smoker or you are walking out of smoking and you want your gums and your teeth to go to become better, vitamin C is actually something for you. So fermented cabbage, uh, green leafy vegetables, lemon peels, all these are very good sources for you. Another function of vitamin C. I told you vitamin E is another antioxidant. So the liver uses vitamin E and vitamin C to clear those reactive oxygen species that are caused by seed oils in the system. But most importantly, when you bind this vitamin E to this reactive oxygen species, it leaves the system because you know it detoxify the system. But vitamin C does a tremendous work in liberating or regenerating that vitamin E. So for you to actually have optimum amounts of vitamin E in the system, you need vitamin C. Amazing, right? So vitamin C is a great, great vitamin. But above all, it is involved in formation of collagen. How many of you take collagen supplements from that company? Collagen supplements, people who have arthritis, people who have <laughs> a risk of hypertension and, and the stroke, taking collagen supplements, people who have very weak bones, collagen supplements. You're taking collagen supplements without knowing that you only need vitamin C to actually activate your system to, trust, to start producing collagen. You can easily take red meat, you can easily take uh, the, the bone broth, you can easily take all the animal proteins and then add on vitamin C and you will get enough collagen for your system. Imagine that. Natural ways of survival, but you again, you are somebody who loves quick fix, right? You want quick fix. You want collagen supplements to look fancy because supplements just came in the other day and now they are a multi-billion dollar industry. But vitamin C is the one that is involved information of collagen that covers your blood vessel that makes your bones very important so if you have low vitamin c you start bleeding all over and therefore anemia is coming in and then remember i put up a post that was talking about about methemoglobinemia methemoglobinemia that's the name Somebody is asking me, does nicotine patch stroke gum contain nicotine? But you just mentioned nicotine patch. Did you ask me that question? It's like asking me, does cow milk come from a cow? <laughs> I'm yet to see cow milk coming from a goat. <laughs> so yes, it does contain nicotine. It does. And some of the patches contain higher content of nicotine. So when somebody is actually avoiding cigarette smokes and goes for the chewing gums or for the patches, they realize the, high, the amount of nicotine that they're taking into the system goes even higher. And by the time they're coming back to cigarettes, they're smoking a higher number of cigarettes. Imagine that. Oh, whoa. System. System lies. <laughs> yeah. Methemoglobinemia, which is another function of vitamin C, to help you cure, uh, cure or walk out of that methemoglobinemia. This is where the red blood cells are dysfunctional. They have a very bad shape. Why? Because the hemoglobin inside the red blood cell that actually carries the oxygen is now defective. And why is it defective? Because of deficiency of vitamin C, which actually is supposed to convert ferric to ferrous. So your red blood cells are, re are gorged with ferric and they are having these crazy shapes. They cannot carry enough oxygen to the tissues. And now you start having that blue skin. We call it cyanosis. Because you cannot carry oxygenated blood all over the body. And that's a, that's a dangerous condition. You know that? You can actually pass out from that. So simply take vitamin C. That vitamin C will get into the cells. It will help you reduce ferric to ferrous. And this condition is gone. That's simple. But not the vitamin C supplements, no. And then vitamin C, finally, it is involved in formation of ferritin. Ferritin is the storage form of iron. Iron is called ferrous. So when you hear ferritin, it's the same thing. Ferrous, ferritin. But ferritin is the storage form of iron in the liver. So vitamin C is needed for you to form that ferritin. So without vitamin C, automatically, anemia is coming in, methanoboglobinemia is coming in, scurvy is coming in, bleeding through gums, bleeding through the skin, and all over the organs is actually coming in, very weak bones are coming in because of low collagen, iron absorption is going to go down. Even when you're eating those omena and you don't have vitamin C, and you don't have a fixed gut, you're wasting time. So now already you already know the deficiencies of, uh, the deficiency conditions for vitamin C. 
And I told you, vitamins, fats, and protein, these are the three uh, foods, micro and macronutrients, that actually come with deficiency conditions. So if you don't eat them, there's a deficiency attached to it. But carbohydrates do not have any deficiency condition. So stop telling us that carbohydrates are necessary. They are not necessary. They don't have a deficiency condition. And they are not the only sources of energy. Fats are. Proteins are. Somebody who tells you that carbohydrates are energy giving, that is a crook. That's an evil person. They are evil. They sat near the window because they don't even understand lipogenesis or lipolysis. They don't even understand that proteogenesis or proteolysis. You can actually break down protein to get glucose, to get energy. You can actually break down fats to get energy, super energy. But somebody is there sitting there telling you, because they are addicts of sugars and carbohydrates, they are telling you, oh, you know, you must take carbohydrates to get energy. Carbohydrates are survival foods. Look straight into their eyes and ask them, that doctor of yours, ask him, Daktari, what is the deficiency condition for carbohydrates? You are too swallowing in Atosha. Si oh, carbohydrates are energy giving foods. Ask him, what is the deficiency condition for carbohydrates? If I don't eat them, what will I suffer from? Crickets, crickets. Oh, low energy. But low energy is not a deficiency condition. Crickets, crickets, crickets. Now you start saving <laughs> the true against the, <laughs> the evil. Okay? Good. So now, let's continue. Most importantly on vitamin C, there's one thing I was almost leaving out. Vitamin C, actually two things. One, vitamin C behaves like oxytocin. Those of you who know oxytocin, oxytocin is the, 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 the hormone that actually causes the contraction of the uterus so that you can give birth. So therefore, vitamin C on extremely high doses, it, actually, it can actually terminate a pregnancy. Why? Because it causes those contractions of the uterus. Now, I'm not telling you to go and take a whole pack of vitamin C tablets hoping to get rid of that pregnancy. You will just die. Just told you it has the same effect as oxytocin. And you know, yes, it's also the love hormone, the one that keeps bonding. And that's the reason why uh, when a mother is breastfeeding, they produce this oxytocin. It gives them the bond between them and the child. You're wondering, why is it that this mother, when they hold this child, the child goes silent? And you as the father, <laughs> when you try to hold the child, the child is noisy all night. Yeah? Like, hey, um, don't want to uh -uh. <laughs> Bro, work on your oxytocin. <laughs> anyway, number two. <laughs> number two, vitamin C has two two components of the ascorbic acid. One part of the ascorbic acid is what we call D-ascorbic acid, and the other one is L-ascorbic acid. This is why it gets interesting. Same to MSG. So L-ascorbic acid is the natural and uh, uh, the one that is active. You can easily absorb it. You can easily uh, change your system entirely. So that is the L one. The D one is the one that is actually, I'm suspecting, is present in all these processed foods that you're taking and these fortified foods. And this D one is the one that is easily oxidized. And guess when you oxidize ascorbic acid, what do you form? You form oxalic acid. Hello? Can I, can I go slow? <laughs> yeah? Yeah, please, if you're sitting near the window, it's time for you to close the windows. Come back here, okay? Vitamin C, aka ascorbic acid, the D form, easily oxidized to form oxalic acid. Now, most of your elderly people are actually taking calcium supplements, right? Because of the weak bones and all that and arthritis. The ones that they take every single day for 30 days, either calcium sandals or other, or the osteocares and all that. Also, most of the green leafy vegetables contain calcium, including the spinach. Now, when you have kidney stones, your doctor will still maintain you on calcium supplements, but tell you to stay away from spinach. But yes, spinach has calcium. But that is natural calcium, has no problem anyway. But anyway, even if it has a problem, you're not taking synthetic vitamin C, so it will not oxidize to form oxalic acid that will react with the calcium to form calcium oxalate that will now start blocking your urine uh, system. And you know how painful urine stones are, and the kidney stones are crazy. Now, people who are uh, who have uh, who've been diagnosed with HIV, they are taking a, a drug that is called cotrimoxazole, the septrin. That is a drug that if you take it, they tell you to take it with a lot of water. And the reason why they are saying that is because they expect that if you take with a lot of water, it will become soluble and it leaves the system because the side effect of that drug is crystal urea. It forms crystals in urine. So you urinate crystals. Very painful. So you tell me that drug is not soluble in water. But they'll still tell you 
that you have to take that drug with a lot of water. As though if you take sand and you put it in water in a bucket and then you add water, does if you add more water, does it make that this does it makes this sand soluble? Like sometimes I don't know where we get these issues from. Something that is not soluble in water, even if you add the volume of water, it will not be soluble in water. It is not soluble in water. Ata ufanya nini? Uchukua kitu iko insoluble in water and put add a, a lot of water in it. It will not be soluble. Sand is insoluble in water regardless of how much water you are using, regardless of the volume of water. So, somebody who has HIV and they are on calcium supplements and now they are eating uh, they, they are taking the, the vitamin C su supplements because they think it's going to boost their immunity because they are told that your immune system is low so you have to take vitamin C supplements, the ascorbic acid supplements to help you. You're going to produce to oxidize this vitamin C to get oxalic acid. You're going to use that calcium supplement that you're using. You'll get hypertension. That is one. Number two, it will precipitate in the kidneys as it's getting out because it's going to react with the oxalic acid to form calcium oxalate crystals. And these are the kidney stones. So drop calcium supplements, drop synthetic vitamin C. Drop the foods that are fortified with vitamin C. It is ascorbic acid. It is synthetic. It is not the natural form of ascorbic acid. Drop it.